You're listening to the Cashology Podcast by FNBO, a place dedicated to helping you become more financially savvy every day. It's a little like school, but your only homework is living your best financial life. I'm your host, Justin, and class is now in session. In this podcast episode, I'm joined by a financial advisor here at FNBO, Eddie Barajas. Uh, Eddie started his career back oof, nine years ago, and he spent the first three years uh, on the retail side, as we call it here at the bank. So Eddie was a teller, universal banker, and personal banker before he moved into the investments and planning department in 2018. Since then, Eddie has helped clients with financial planning, investment management, and insurance needs. Eddie's focus is to help clients navigate the murky waters of retirement and retirement planning by conducting thorough reviews of their goals and needs while using a financial plan to help steer them through meeting those exact goals in retirement. Um, I had a really great time talking with Eddie. Uh, He's definitely a knowledgeable guy, and I hope you enjoy uh, listening to this episode. The research shows it. Older people manage to stay happier during tough times. Once you turn 50, your ability to cope with life and all of its challenges is at its height. One of those challenges can be managing your money. Another might be keeping your retirement plan on track. It takes some discipline and stick to itiveness, uh, if that's a word. So today, we're going to offer some helpful reminders to those in their 50s, still active and earning, but on their way to retirement. Welcome, and thanks for listening to the Cashology podcast, hosted by your guide on the path to financial savvy, Justin. All right. Thanks so much, Eddie, for joining us on this podcast episode. Um, I know you're a financial advisor, so would you take just a a moment or two? What is a financial advisor? What's your kind of day in the life like? Yeah, no, that's a great question, Justin. Thank you for having me on your podcast. And I'm super excited to be here and, and to be talking with you. I would say a financial advisor, that role has changed quite a lot. Um, I think over the last several decades that that position um, has certainly changed in, in the light of what customers consider us. You know, looking back in the late 80s and early 90s, uh, you know, a few decades ago, we were considered stockbrokers, if you will. Um, and I think we've uh, all certainly have moved away from being labeled, hopefully, <laughs> as, as stockbrokers and more as financial planners, financial consultants, and financial advisors. So um, really, my, my goal for my clients and, and customers here at the bank is to uh, help them navigate through retirement. Um, the retirement itself can be very complex for many individuals. So sure. just learning more about them and their situations and, and provide them advice and guidance to get through retirement is, is my goal. And what's a typical day look like? So on a typical day, I like to meet with uh, bank customers or new customers of the bank um, and talk about uh, their current financial situations, um, discuss you know any existing retirement assets or other outside assets that they may have. Generally, I'm reviewing as well their bank accounts and their budgets, uh, which really we start off at a very basic level and kind of start working our way to the more complex situations and goals to hopefully help provide them some some advice and some guidance on on where they may need to make some changes so that they can have a better outcome or outlook for retirement. Very cool. I like that. And it sounds like you're just the expert we'd want to have on the podcast. And so with that, I'd like to dive in uh, to the first question. So kind of the topic is for someone in their 50s, what's the first money management tip you'd offer? That's a great question, Justin. I think most of my client base is in that pre-retirement or retirement phase um, so generally, I, I am meeting with a lot of individuals in this age group who have been working longer, uh, who maybe have higher positions in their roles and are starting to truly consider, uh, you know, that pre-retirement phase and, and doing some planning around that. Very cool. And, you know, one thing I think of, and I guess it's to the listener's prerogative, is when you're in your 50s, are you a senior or not? I know, like, you know, they hit 50 and then in the mail, all of a sudden you get there. Uh, AARP card and they're like, oh, are they really seniors all of a sudden? And, you know, I don't think that's really the case. But, you know, for this age group, um, 
what should they be thinking about as it relates to Social Security and Medicare? Well, it's funny that you asked, Jess, and I, I have a similar experience when I'm talking about customers or potential new customers with even some of my colleagues here at the bank when they refer me uh, someone and I have a meeting with them and I'm like, yeah, they're say 55 and they're like, Oh, they're pretty old. And I, and I think to myself, actually, that's, that's still very young. Again, remember most of my uh, client base is, is mostly retirees. Uh, but I do think that at that age, they really need to start learning more about social security and Medicare uh, and how these programs work. Um, social security administration has a lot of great online tools that they can use. And you also want to have more time to learn about these programs because they are very complex. Um, So this is the perfect time to check in, create an account with them, and then start learning about what your benefits will be in the future. Yeah, I think that's really great advice. The complexity kind of in nature of Social Security, Medicare, I know you can't really start to sign up until you kind of approach your 65th birthday. Um, And it's just really important to know what Medicare will and won't pay for. Absolutely. I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that Medicare will pay uh, for long-term care. Um, there are some Medicare benefits that will help individuals you know, coming out of a hospital and going into other facilities for treatment and care, but usually that coverage has a, a time limit. Uh, last time I checked, it was around 100 days. So anyone that's approaching retirement truly needs to start to consider is their need for long-term care insurance. It's one of the pieces that I think I find the most with a lot of new clients, existing clients, that they have not properly planned for long-term care. Absolutely. I don't think I could disagree with you on um, it's not a bad idea uh, to be investing in that long-term care. When it comes to retirement savings, people in their 50s have some advantages, don't they? I, I think I've heard of catch-up contributions. Right. Yeah, Justin, that's correct. If you have a 401k at work, um, I think that you, you definitely need to try to work towards maxing out those contributions each and every year. Um, but someone that is 50 and above can uh, contribute up to 30000 uh, for 2023 versus the standard contribution limit for anyone below 50, which is $22,500. So that extra $7,500 in catch up is, is certainly something that you would want to take advantage of um, in your 401k. Absolutely. So is it just 401ks or you know what other savings are available? That's correct, Justin. Yeah. So for anyone that has a 401k and they're 50 years or older, they can contribute up to 30,000 in uh, 2023. So your general standard contribution is $22,500. So that's an additional $7,500 in catch-up contributions that you can make, as well as in your traditional and Roth IRAs. If you are over the age of 50, uh, you can contribute an additional $1,000 that would put you at $7,500 for 2023. Any other types of savings uh, that people in their 50s should consider beyond kind of uh, what I'll call the traditional retirement accounts? Well, I think outside of your traditional retirement accounts, it's important to consider insurance needs as well during this time. Um, But more importantly, making sure that you have yourself covered, ensuring that there's an accessible emergency uh, rainy day fund that's in your checking account or savings account that you have enough to pay for six months or more worth of living expenses. I think that's a really important part. Uh, And even in myself, that's my goal of my emergency fund is making sure those six months are kind of saved. And like you said, rainy day, you never know what the future holds. I think it's important to have a easily accessible emergency fund or rainy day fund. Uh, Hopefully that's enough to pay for six months worth of living expenses in the event that you have an unexpected circumstance or lose a job. You want to make sure that you have enough reserves to cover any and all of your expenses for that minimum six months. Absolutely. Makes sense. And you know, uh, recommendations even from other podcasts are set up that budget so you know what those six-month expenses are. 
And so I think kind of all of this wraps into when you get into your 50s, it's really important to finish strong, right? Oh, absolutely, Justin. I think managing uh, our money carefully is one of the smartest decisions that, that we can make. It's all part of creating a healthy and, and fulfilling retirement, as well as, you know, working towards uh, creating and protecting wealth also. Absolutely. And one thing I just wanted to add on, it sounds like, especially, you know, if you're in this journey in your 50s, 40s, 30s, whatever it might be, um, a financial advisor, so someone like yourself is able to help walk that person through kind of the scenarios, the thinking uh, that they kind of need. Um, and I think that's kind of what you described at the top, right? Yeah, hundred percent. I think it's at any time a great idea to sit down and, and speak with a financial advisor, uh, whether you're in your 30s, 40s, or, or 50s. But truly at 50, I think retirement planning becomes more realistic. And so having that professional advice and guidance from someone else that can help give you some perspective and help you make some course corrections throughout your earning years, your working years, will hopefully give you uh, some peace of mind and help you sleep better at night if you know um, that you're being taken care of and that you're working towards your goals or meeting your goals, I should say. Um, so it's, it's truly important at this time to, to take advantage of that. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. Uh, so Eddie, I really wanted to thank you for hopping on, joining the podcast today. If we had a listener that really resonated with what you said, it's really kind of at this point where, hey, I want to make a decision. I want to I, I want to talk to Eddie. I want to talk to a financial advisor. How could they get a hold of you? Great question, Justin. I think one of the easiest ways to find uh, some of my contact information would be to log on to fnbo.com forward slash wealth. Um, there they can find more information about my department and what we do. And you can also find me on the list of advisors there, uh, Eddie Barajas. And by clicking on that link, uh, you will see uh, a landing page with my information, both email, phone number, um, and also branch location if anybody wants to stop by and see me here in Fort Collins. Wonderful. Great way to get, get a hold of you and find you. Thanks everyone for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and keep an eye out for more Cashology coming your way soon. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Podcasts are for informational purposes only and not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations. When making decisions about your financial situation, consult a financial professional for advice. Podcasts are not regularly updated and information may become outdated. Deposit products are offered by First National Bank of Omaha, member FDIC. Investment products are not FDIC insured, not a deposit or other obligation of the bank, not insured by any federal government agency, not guaranteed by the bank, may lose value. Securities offered through Raymond James Financial Services, Inc., member FINRA SIPC. First National Bank of Omaha and First Investments in Planning are not registered brokers or dealers and are independent of Raymond James Financial Services, Inc. Investment advisory services offered through Raymond James Financial Services Advisors, Inc. The Cashology Podcast, copyright First National Bank of Omaha. The foregoing information has been obtained from sources considered to be reliable, but we do not guarantee that it is accurate or complete. It is not a statement of all available data necessary for making an investment decision, and it does not constitute a recommendation. Any opinions are those of the speakers and not necessarily those of Raymond James. Every investor situation is unique, and you should consider your investment goals, risk tolerance, and time horizon before making any investment. Prior to making an investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor about your individual situation. 401k plans are long-term retirement savings vehicles. Withdrawal of pre-tax contributions and or earnings will be subject to ordinary income tax and, if taken prior to age 59 and a half, may be subject to a 10% federal tax penalty. Contributions to a traditional IRA may be tax deductible depending on the taxpayer's income, tax filing status, and other factors. Withdrawal of pre-tax contributions and or earnings will be subject to ordinary income tax and, if taken prior to age 59 and a half, may be subject to a 10% federal tax penalty. Like traditional IRAs, contribution limits apply to Roth IRAs. In addition, with a Roth IRA, your allowable contribution may be reduced or eliminated if your annual income exceeds certain limits. Contributions to a Roth IRA are never tax deductible, but if certain conditions are met, distributions will be completely income tax free. These policies have exclusions and or limitations. The cost and availability of long-term care insurance depends on factors such as age, health, and the type and amount of insurance purchased. As with most financial decisions, there are expenses associated with the purchase of long
long-term care insurance. Guarantees are based on the claims paying ability of the insurance company. Links are being provided for information purposes only. Raymond James is not affiliated with and does not endorse, authorize, or sponsor any of the listed websites or their respective sponsors. Raymond James is not responsible for the content of any website or the collection or use of information regarding any website's users and or members.